All right, enough of that silliness. What I wanted to show you today, and I'm first going to warn you, this video has a lot of movement in it. I'm going to be putting up some molding, painting this room, and wallpapering. Now, I'm not going to be completing it in this video, but you're going to see a transformation happen within a half an hour or less, which actually took me two days. Well, I decided today was the day to move as much out of this room as possible so I can start making my lines on the wall for the board and batten or whatever I actually end up using below the wallpaper in this room. I might even just do one board to start, paint, get the wallpaper up, and then do the rest after the cabinets come in. But I always, something like that I can play by ear as I go. But down the hall here, I moved the secretary desk, the drawers are still on the bed. They, it was here in this room. It was, this was all temporary placement. I don't know where I'm gonna put it at one point, but it will be in the bedroom for a while. But the cabinets for this area, at first they said it was going to be November. Now it looks like also mid-December, end of December. So it looks like all the cabinets will be coming in at the same time, even though they're from different vendors. So I've got a little bit more to clean up here. Once I set this room up, I will most likely clear off one of our folding tables and make this our temporary kitchen. But I'm trying to keep the dining room um, as free and clear as possible. Like today, it was all cleaned up and I just put some things on the table again from this room as I move things around. I was taking advantage of Ben being around to move some of the heavy stuff. So, and this little refrigerator will not be moving until the pantry's done because that is going in the pantry. So, I've got a bit more here to clean off, but what I'm going to be playing with today, which I'm a little excited, Ben heard me mention to one of the contractors that I really thought their laser level was cool. So, of course, Amazon showed up with this for my birthday, and the unit is over here. I have to learn how to use it still. Ben has already been playing with it, yikes. Yeah, break it, Linda. Um, so I'm going to be playing with that and it actually makes a level line all around the room so that I can then mark it. So I have the, the level machine working here, the laser level, and it's going all the way around. And it's kind of funny, we were like, do we make it level to the world? <laughs> or to these crooked floors and ceilings. But I'm gonna go with what I have right here, level to the eye in the center. And once the paper's up and it's a little bit busier, I think we'll, you know, it'll all work out. I had the same issue, very much so, at Groton House. Now, I also used this at Groton House, and it works really cool. Let me show you here. You turn it on, I'm gonna switch hands here. You turn it on, and I'm just going to line up my laser line here just so you can see the red and the yellow, I mean the red and the green. And you put it to the wall, and it actually vacuums to the wall, so it's holding it. Now I'm gonna look and also try to figure out why down here, the lines aren't level. So that's interesting. Hmm, I have to figure out which one is and is not level. I figured out my issue is because I was wrapping this little corner. So one thing um, to check level lines, oops, that was my finger, is going off this green one, just to make sure that it's the same from one wall to the other. I'm putting my level at the top of this line I'm so trying to do this with one hand. And I have it on the other green line here. And my bu bubble is in the middle. So I know that my green line is the same height on this wall as it is wrapping the corner. I hope that made sense. Now that I have my line, I'm going to be able to go around with a pencil. I'm going to mark it. And even the line even goes behind the clock here and comes back out. So I'll be able to follow that all the way around.
Now, I would prefer to put up the wood first following these lines, but I'm feeling like kind of a homebody. I've been out and about a little bit or a lot lately, and I do just think I wanna stay home versus popping in the car again. So what I'm going to do, and this is the perk of doing things on your own, and that you know the end result will still be the same, but it's kind of ass backwards, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm going to start painting the lower portion of the wall, and I'm gonna come up right below this line because when I put my wood stock up, it's going to cover up to this point. So I'm going to do that just so that I get the lower half painted. I'll wash off the, the baseboards here so I can paint those. So that's what I'm gonna do, I think, today. I'm just going to start my painting and see how this room pulls together, and then I'll go buy my wood and get out my nail gun, which is always fun. Went around with some spackling compound and filled holes. This way, down the road, when somebody removes the tally hole wallpaper, there won't be holes behind it. So I just have to wait for that to dry so I can sand it and then I will start some painting. Well, I think I might have lucked out from an error that I made almost two years ago. Some of you might remember when I did the trim around the doorways at Groton House, I bought this trim that was the wrong one and too small. Well, I brought it with us here to Sugarwood just in case I needed it for something and instead of just doing flat stock here at the top for the board and batten wall, let me grab a smaller piece. I haven't even held this up yet. This will be the first time I'm looking at it with you up here on the wall. I think I will use this as my top piece here for the trim to start, and then I can get this up, I can wallpaper, and then I can work on the bottom if I'd like. I'm gonna paint the whole thing, but this will allow me to start filling some cracks because this wall definitely has quite a bow in it from where this used to be a chimney and a fireplace. Uh, right here, you can kind of see the lines of where it is. Actually, my wood's right on top of it. There used to be a little hearth here. So I might have enough of this stock to do the walls that I need to do. Get this up, I just have to uh, get my nail gun and my little miter saw. I'll probably just do the handheld for this small project. And I won't have to go to get more wood for at least the start. And if I run out of this, this is fairly common stock. I got it at um, Home Depot or Lowe's. So I'm excited. I just saved myself a car trip, which would be about 40 minutes each way. All right, so I'm getting ready to put up the trim. Now, normally I would use the, I have a larger battery powered saw. I think I only have one miter cut that I'm gonna to need to do here. So I just brought in the portable one. So all I'm gonna do is I'm following my lines and I'm gonna be doing a miter cut for this outside corner. And then I'll be doing the opposite miter cut on the other side. So all I'm gonna do is I'm first going to make a line where my wall ends and I'm gonna give myself just a little cheat to show me that my 45 degree angle goes a certain direction. Since I don't have this bolted down, it is kind of difficult to use to get first started, but I'm right now gonna go with my 45 degree angle measurement here, just locked into place. And I'm looking for my marks. What did I do with them? There it is. So I'm just gonna make sure that my angle is going the way I want it to. Which it does. I should probably show you. What you don't see in the picture frame is I'm holding up the other end with a pretty little decorative item. Why not make work pretty? <laughs> it was the closest I had to the same height to hold this up. There we go. So there is my first outside cut, and now I'll do one the opposite direction for the other wall.
actually gonna move you guys, oops, because you're where I need to be. the lighting was better for you but let's see so this goes here I've got my corner there we go so now I'm going to nail it up I'm going to start in the middle just so that I can move it back and forth almost like a seahorse and line it up I obviously meant seesaw not seahorse it's just like when I said porcupines and pine cones then I'll do the corners They'll be sanded a little bit first and then after, and then I'll keep going. I'm just sanding off some of the rough edges. I'll do it again once it's up, but this is easier to get it this way. Probably the easiest part of this project was to tape up the wood just to hold it since I only have two hands, but the painter's tape did not want to play nice today. Really? My tape's caught on itself. Oh, yeah. Sometimes filming and doing projects is harder than it looks because I'm not thinking about just the project. I'm thinking about you being behind me too. Makes a difference. All right, let's do this one more time. Just a little filler, a little sanding, it'll be beautiful. All right, now like I said, I'm lucky. All the rest are straight cuts. There's no more miter cuts in here. So I should be able to get this going fairly quickly.
Now this is a great product I like to use. You can, it makes a wood filler and you can almost make it, in, or not almost, you can make it to any consistency you want. And it's usually like a three to one ratio. So I'm just gonna add a bit of powder here, which is a lot more than what I'm gonna need, but I wanted to show you here. And let me get some water. Should have a spoon here, but I think my plastic spoons are all in storage. So I'm just gonna mix this up and make myself a putty. And I'm gonna make this a little thicker because I wanna be able to mold it. So now I can take this and mold it. I'm actually going to use, I think, the stick here, which I don't normally do. I'm going to use the pointed end. And then I'll just put some here in the seams. And then I can just push it with my fingers. I'm not sure why my phone's turning everything pink, but we're getting there. I'm saving this little spot just to fill with a scrap piece, but Ben and I never even noticed how tiny this door was until I painted around it. I am gonna paint it the uh, rock pork gray as the same. But right now I'm going to turn the corner. I'm gonna wallpaper the top of this wall and then I will paint below. I have to move everything from this side of the room now to the other side. But um, let me walk this way and show you what I got done over here. I still have to, of course, put the molding below, which will give it a whole new look, but I'm pleased. Got up all around. This beam was certainly a challenge going around all of it. I'm gonna to try to remember to show you how I did that by making a couple little cuts and then using my very sharp X-Acto knife. But I have to go around a second time with the paint, but it's getting there. Okay, ready to see the mess? Boom. But I don't care. I realized I was almost done with working around the beam and cutting it, and I promised I was going to show you how I did it. So I can show you part of the step. I'm going to go up on the ladder here. And so this beam is, of course, very crooked. So what I'm doing is I go around and I first give it a little bit of a, a seam. And then I pulled it down and I'm cutting it a little, little tabs almost like you would if you're working with fabric and going around a, a corner. And then once I did that, I'm going around increasing it again. Then I pull it back and I'm able to cut right along that seam line. And as you will see, it falls along the beam nicely. All right, so I'm going to do that, but I do need two hands. I just wanted to show you this before I kept going. Mm -hmm. 